Hello, my name's Hemingway Jones. Welcome to the channel. This is our little corner of the internet where we speak about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and pretty much everything that has to do with self-expression. I'm coming to you today from the library and I'd like to address an interesting topic. I want to talk about those myths that we hear all the time and I want to see if we can dispel some of them. So today I'd like to address top five fountain pen myths. So before we get started, I want to thank you all for joining me. I've noticed we're starting to gain some momentum. A lot of new people are joining us. There's a lot of new voices in the comments and we're having some great conversations and I'm learning a lot from each of you. It's really a pleasure having this kind of dialogue and I think that's the most fun part about YouTube. So thanks. So in relation to fountain pen myths, we hear these things from time to time. People will say it to us in conversation. You'll see it in comment sections. I get a lot of these over at TikTok where I do my pen reviews and you hear them from time to time and some of them have some basis in truth and I think some of them raise some issues and some ideas that it's best that we just talk through. So this is in no way a definitive list and I'm sure it's a topic we will address again from time to time. So let's get into it. Our first myth, I'll call it the I'm not worthy myth. And that's the idea that someone cannot write with an expensive pen if they're either not at a certain position in their life or if they have terrible handwriting. So I would start by saying that I view this hobby as being very democratic. That if you're into fountain pens, I think it's wonderful. I don't care what you're writing with. I love some very inexpensive, easily accessible pens, and I love some very expensive pens. And I think there's rubbish in both camps and everything in the middle as well. We all have our preferences. But what is most important is that you don't have to be at a certain stage to own a certain pen. Own what you want to own, own what you can afford, what you're curious about, what you enjoy, and spread that passion to other people so that this hobby grows even larger. Because it's all about sharing, it's all about self-expression, and a pen doesn't do much good if it's just sitting there. So don't feel that you're not worthy of some great pen. Use it, abuse it a little bit, scratch it up, make it yours, don't worry about it, and own it. And along with that too, you don't have to have perfect handwriting to have a very nice pen. It's all about the process. So enjoy the process, keep writing, and however you write, write. I will never judge you. The second myth and I hear this all the time, is that expensive pens are better than inexpensive pens. And it's just not true. Better is relative. They're different. They have materials that cost more. They have craftsmanship that costs more. They have a brand markup that's a bit more defendable, if you will, because people will pay it. That's the difference between an expensive pen and a cheap pen. There are some very affordable pens that are just beautiful to write with. 
I personally enjoy writing with my Twisbees as much as I do any other pen, especially the Twisby with the stub nib, the Eco, fantastic writing experience. I feel as inspired as when I'm using one of my Mont Blancs. Similarly with the Vax 700 and some other pens. So it doesn't matter what you spend on a pen, a pen being expensive does not make it better. A pen that works for you makes it better for you. So don't worry about any of the snobbery that you hear or anyone that would condescend you for using any brand of pen. If you like it and it works for you, then put your passion into it and enjoy it. Myth number three, and this I will admit, is the myth that got me into fountain pens. I believed that if I wrote with a fountain pen, it would give me better handwriting. 30 years ago when I got into fountain pens, I was journaling and my handwriting was very pedestrian. It's still very pedestrian, but very mid-century, the sort of handwriting they taught us back in the 1970s. I am very much a product of that education. So I thought that if I wrote with a fountain pen that my handwriting would have those beautiful Spencerian curlicues and would flow in this amazing way and it would just transcend how I was taught, what my habits were, and frankly what my physical limitations are. Because there are physical limitations in handwriting and this is why I will never judge someone's handwriting. I think of my own grandmother who had beautiful handwriting, but she didn't maintain it her whole life. She got older and her script got up more irregular, but I still loved it. I loved her and it was interesting right to the end. So it doesn't have to be this beautiful, perfect aesthetic for me to appreciate it. I myself have numbness in my hand that goes up my arm. It makes it a little difficult for me to write at times. I soldier through because I love it and I enjoy it. And it's just one of life's little ironies that one of the things that I love is a little bit on the difficult side for me to do. Myth number four is that if you write with a fountain pen, you have to write in cursive. So I hear this quite a bit over at TikTok in my comments, people asking whether or not they can print with a fountain pen. And of course you can. You can print, you can draw, you can write in Spencerian, you can do whatever you like with a fountain pen. But there is this idea that you have to use it to write in cursive exclusively. Now there are certain nibs that do make the cursive lines a bit nicer, like a cursive italic nib. But all nibs do really is affect the line. Your hand directs the pen and you can craft any sort of letter that you wish. So no, you do not have to write in cursive with a fountain pen. Our last myth, myth number five, is that gold nibs are superior to steel nibs. Now, many of us believe this to be true, and many of us sort of have this underlaying bias, where if you read the specs on a pen and you see, oh, it has a steel nib, well, maybe I'm not going to go in that direction. I'd rather have a 14 karat gold nib. And certainly at certain price points, you start to expect things, like a steel nib on a $200 pen starts to look a little funny in some cases. But if you look at all gold nibs and all steel nibs, and you started to pick some of your favorite nibs out of the collection, I doubt they would all be within the gold sphere. And I'll give you some examples of some of my favorite nibs. So I love the Twisby Stub nib. It's a fantastic steel nib. It's a very much an affordable nib, and I love writing with that. It is one of my favorites. Another one is Lamy's Calligraphy Nib, another very affordable nib, fantastically flowy. It's like a very narrow stub with very square shoulders, so your downstroke is just beautifully wide. 
and your cross stroke is very thin. It, your script just looks fantastic in that. It's a favorite nib. And then on the gold side, I think of Pinator's quill nib, which is like gloriously quirky and fantastic to write with. Similarly is Mont Blanc's Egyptomania with its incredibly soft medium nib. That nib is just a joy to write with. And Mont Blanc's 149 nib, that gigantic, gorgeous two-tone gold nib that makes it so much fun to craft letters and to see it just tracing across the page. I love that nib. So I am not confined to any particular type. Some gold nibs are just okay. Some steel nibs are extraordinary. The Blue Dew Flex is a steel nib that is fantastic. The Kareen Waterman 14 karat gold nib is a very nice nib. There's not a lot that's super extraordinary about it. So it really depends. The bottom line for me on these things is, do I like the pen? Do I like how it writes? Does it give me what I'm looking for? And that is unique to me. I love smoothness over feedback. And I know many people prefer feedback over smoothness. If you're going for feedback, you might be in that Pilot 823 camp. If you're going for smoothness, you're more Schaefer Mont Blanc, where the cushion of ink just rolls over every little aberration in the page to make it an incredibly smooth writing experience. It's all personal preference, and I wouldn't confine yourself to either steel nor gold. Just enjoy them all. So what do you think? Are there other myths out there that I missed? Are there any pervasive ideas out there that people hold dear that you know are just not true? If so, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate your spending part of your week with me. I've released new videos each Thursday at noon, so you can count on another one coming next week. So thank you. Please like, comment, and share this with someone who you think would enjoy this content. We're really starting to grow this channel, and I think it's pretty wonderful. So thank you very much, and we will see each other further up the road. Take care.